Well, hey there, I'm Emma from Mmm English, and today we are going to be going over 18 everyday conversational idioms that will help you to describe feelings and emotions. These are really useful idioms, ones that I use all the time to describe sadness, happiness, fear, disgust, anger, and surprise. So that's six different emotions, and for each one, there's going to be three idioms. Now, I've got a really fun and great little challenge for you at the end, so make sure you stick with me all the way through. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster. Have you heard that idiom before? It's a bonus one. I've added the meaning to it on the worksheet that I've created for you. The link is down in the description. I've got all of the idioms that we're going over today with the meaning and some examples to help you know when and how to use them. Plus, there's a little mini quiz to help you put everything that you learn into practice. Are you ready to get into it? Let's go. Happy, sad, angry, these are all really common adjectives that we can use to talk about our feelings in English, but so common that they can sort of feel a little dull, especially if they're the only adjectives that you use to talk about these feelings. But to be totally honest, these words actually describe a really wide range of emotions because we can say, I'm really happy that I get to finish work early tonight, or I'm really happy I just won a trip to Italy. The idioms that we're going to go through in this lesson will help you talk about that range of emotions, but also help to make your English more interesting, more fun, more meaningful. Thanks very much. Bye. Oh my gosh, I just got the promotion at work. Emma, that's fantastic. You must be over the moon. Over the moon. Over the moon is when you are really pleased about something. You're ecstatic. If you just won a trip to Italy, you would be over the moon. How was your meeting? It was great. They gave me the time off, so I'm happy as Larry. Now, this one is quite an Australian expression, actually. I think, unless anyone's going to jump in and say that they use it too, but I really love this expression, happy as Larry. It's kind of got that rhyming pattern in it. To be honest, we don't really know who Larry is, but we all generally agree that he's a really happy guy. So we all want to be as happy as Larry. You can use it anytime you're feeling happy, not crazy, crazy happy, not ecstatic, but just right there in the middle. There's a public holiday coming up and I'm going away with my friends, so I'm as happy as Larry. I had no idea that I'd enjoy my new job so much. I'm a very happy camper. So this one is kind of similar to happy as Larry. A happy camper indicates that you're really content, really satisfied, rather than extremely happy. But interestingly, Happy camper is often used in the negative form as well. So for example, when the company reshuffled the organization, the team were not happy campers. They were unhappy. But it's really important to note that this is an exception. A happy camper can be used in the negative. We wouldn't use the negative form with over the moon or happy as Larry. We wouldn't say, I'm not as happy as Larry. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why. So remember, if you want to use an idiom to describe happiness, you can say over the moon, happy as Larry, or that you're a happy camper. Okay, let's talk about some idioms for sadness. And again, sadness can move from feeling a little down about your day to downright awful, you know, feeling like life is super hard, something dramatic has happened, something awful has happened. So there's some really big extremes here. We've got to be careful about how we use these idioms. And our first one is a heavy heart. With a heavy heart, he spoke at his father's funeral. 
Have you ever had that feeling where it seems like there's something heavy on your chest? Maybe it's hard to breathe or just your heart feels heavy and that's this feeling that comes through in this idiom. It's a terrible feeling to experience and definitely on the more extreme side of sadness. Let's see if we can lift the mood a little. They thought they were buying their dream house, but another couple offered more for it. They've both been feeling down in the dumps all week. They're really sad, they're really disappointed. I'm a bit bummed by missing my best friend's birthday. So this just means that you're low on energy, a little disappointed, a bit sad. So it's not as bad as down in the dumps. And this one is definitely not as extreme as a heavy heart, all right? So it's really not appropriate to say he's a bit bummed because his friend died, right? That would sound really insensitive. And similarly, it seems a little over the top to say, it's with a heavy heart that I tell you I can't come to your birthday. It's quite dramatic, so just be wary of how and when it's appropriate to use these idioms. Now, our next emotion is fear. And again, fear is felt in a range. There's anxious and nervous right through to utter terror. I really hope that you haven't felt utter terror too often in life. Sometimes that can scare the living daylights out of you. So this idiom describes a terrifying feeling. It's right at the top of our scale. You know, when it's 3 a.m. in the morning and the phone rings randomly. <coughs> Something must be wrong. You get worried, terrified. When my brother called me at 3 a.m., it scared the living daylights out of me. I jumped out of my skin is a little less severe. Maybe you've just walked into a room and a sibling or a friend has jumped out from behind a wall to scare you, right? You get such a fright. Oh, I nearly jumped out of my skin. I quite like this next idiom too. It's used to describe a feeling of unease or discomfort, nervousness. Oh, that sound gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> say it, it's fun to say, heebie-jeebies. You know when all the hairs on your arms prickle and they stand up on end? That's the heebie-jeebies. So to talk about fear, we have, it scared the living daylights out of me. I jumped out of my skin and I got the heebie-jeebies. So our next set of idioms are about the feeling of disgust, a really strong feeling of revulsion and disapproval. And our first disgusting idiom is to make you want to vomit. <laughs> so this is really gross, right? It is so disgusting. Whatever this thing is, is so disgusting. It makes you want to be sick, to throw up, to vomit. The smell was so foul, it made me want to vomit. Okay, that's not really a great image, so let's move along. Actually, this next one is not much better. It's just not quite as graphic. Something can make your stomach turn. I can't watch those medical shows that show you close-ups of knee and hip surgeries in the middle of an operation. They make my stomach turn. <sighs> oh. The thought of it sends you these feelings that your stomach sort of is twisting and turning and upside down and you feel a little ill. No, thank you. I don't like that one either. <laughs> not quite as graphic as the last one, but still not a pleasant feeling. Okay, to make your skin crawl. This one would also fit into the fear category, I think, because it's that similar um, uneasy, uncomfortable feeling that you get. I remember watching a documentary on Netflix last year when they showed the picture of a serial killer and honestly, he looked so scary. He made my skin crawl. Ugh. 
If you have a phobia of insects or leeches like me, spiders and bugs and things, they might make your skin crawl. The thought of spiders and snakes makes your skin crawl. Ooh. All right, let's leave disgust behind and move on to the next emotion, anger. My neighbor had just got a new car. He pulled up onto the street out the front of our house and then got out to admire it. And out of nowhere, someone hit the back of the car. Oh my gosh, he flew off the handle. So this expression is used to describe someone who's really angry. If anyone is in this state, it's best to stay out of their way, right? He flew off the handle when someone rammed into his car. Now, keep in mind, it's not he flew off his handle, flew off the handle, okay? To be up in arms about something, it also describes feeling really angry, but it's less aggressive than to fly off the handle. Sounds less aggressive, right? If you think about throwing your arms up in the air, we do this when we're frustrated, we're annoyed about something, we're irritated. So there's a difference, right? Flying off the handle is really angry, but we can say she was up in arms about how messy the shared kitchen was. And lastly, <sighs> I'm at the end of my tether. If you've got young kids, then this could be a really useful idiom for you. Imagine that moment when your kids have been really naughty, really disobedient all day. You've been asking them to tidy their room, clean up all their toys all afternoon, and they're not doing it. So you keep hearing them yelling and screaming. It's driving you nuts, right? And then, a ball breaks through the kitchen window. And you yell at them, I'm at the end of my tether with you. Meaning, you've pushed me to my limit. I'm at the end of my ability to be patient with you. I've had enough. Cool, so now you've got three idioms to use if someone is driving you crazy, another idiom or maybe someone is making you really angry or annoyed, or even if you're thinking about describing a situation where you felt that way, use these idioms to add flavor and color to the way that you're describing that situation. Can you believe that? <laughs> I had to do a double take there. We've already been through 15 idioms together. Time flies when you're having fun. Before we get into our last emotion, let me know what you think about this video. Are you enjoying it? Hit that subscribe button, give it a like. All of these things help me to know what lessons you really wanna see here at mm English. Oh, whoa, that came out of the blue. I hope it didn't stop you dead in your tracks. Aha, I've already used all three idioms that I'm gonna go through now. I wonder if you picked up on any of them. To do a double take is to look again at something really quickly. Like you see it and then you go back to normal and then you suddenly think, oh my gosh, what was that? It's surprise, right? It's caught you by surprise. And we often use it with the verb do. I did a double take, I couldn't believe it. And when something comes at you from out of the blue, it's like it came from nowhere. It was completely unexpected. They got married just a few weeks after meeting. It was completely out of the blue. Now, this one is almost quite literal. It's when you suddenly stop moving because you're so surprised by something. She stopped dead in her tracks when she saw Maria. She hadn't seen her in over 20 years. So all of these idioms help to express shock or surprise in some way. They're really great to add to stories and to make your English more interesting and exciting, right? I stopped dead in my tracks. I couldn't believe it was her. It came out of the blue. Okay, so we've been through all of those different idioms. Now I've got a little challenge for you to help you put into practice what you've been learning. So get your fingers ready to type. I want you to share a little story with me down in the comments. Take me on an emotional roller coaster. Tell me a story, maybe one that you've experienced, 
Maybe it's a fictional one that you make up, but tell me a story where the emotions go up, go down, go up and go down and try to use one of the idioms from each section of this video. And don't forget to download the free workbook that I've created for you. It's got all of the idioms from this lesson, their meanings, example sentences, as well as a bonus little quiz to help you test what you learned. I'm super excited about my next video coming out on the mm English channel. I hope to see you in there. Bye for now.